Now let's talk about this particular seasonality mode multiplicative that we set when defining the model instance. So Prophet is particularly good at modeling time series that have multiple seasonalities and doesn't face some of the drawbacks of other algorithms. And at its core, Prophet is the sum of three functions of time plus an error term. And the three functions of times are a growth function, seasonality function and a holiday function. And then on top of that, you add the error term. So the growth function has three main options, uh, which is growth equal to linear, growth equal to logistic and growth is flat. So when growth is linear, in that case, the underlying growth rate is constant over time. Uh, this is the default setting for profit. It uses a set of piecewise linear equations with differing slopes between change points. When linear growth is used, the growth term will look similar to the classic y equal to mx plus b, except the slope m and offset b are variables that will change value at each change point. And change points are points in time where a time series experiences a shift in its underlying pattern or trends. For example, a change points may occur when a stock price suddenly jumps in response to a major news event or when a seasonal pattern shifts due to changes in weather or consumer behavior. Now the next situation when growth is logistic. Uh, this setting is useful when your time series has a cap or floor in which the values you are modeling become saturated and cannot surpass a maximum or minimum value. Uh, when logistic growth is used, the growth term will look similar to the typical equation for a logistic curve, except uh, the carrying capacity will vary as a function of time and the growth rate and the offset are variables that will change value at each change points. And the third situation is when the growth is flat. So in this case, you can choose a flat trend when there is no growth over time, but there still may be seasonality. And if, if the growth is set to flat, the growth function will be pretty much a constant value. Now let's talk about the uh, configuration that is we have chosen. We have chosen seasonality is a multiplicative and yearly seasonality is a number four. What that means? So uh, seasonality multiplicative, this parameter determines how the seasonal component interacts with the trend component. There are two options, additive and multiplicative. In an additive model, the seasonal effect is added to the trend, whereas in a multiplicative model, the seasonal effect is multiplied by the base trend. A multiplicative seasonality is appropriate when the magnitude of the seasonal fluctuations increases as the trend component increases. This is common in many real world scenarios such as sales data where higher sales volume lead to a larger seasonal fluctuations and also in this particular case of uh, bike sharing usage. And we'll come to that in a second more on this. Uh, and then yearly seasonality is equal to 4. This parameter controls the granularity of the yearly seasonal component. So when you set yearly seasonality equal to 4, which is what we have done here, you are actually specifying that the yearly seasonal component should be modeled using four Fourier terms. This can be thought of as using four pairs of sine and cosine functions to approximate the yearly seasonal pattern. So by default, uh, Profit will automatically determine the appropriate number of Fourier terms to model the yearly seasonality. However, you can override this by providing an integer value. Uh, and the choice of the number of Fourier terms can significantly affect the flexibility of the seasonal component. If you choose a low number of Fourier terms, such as four in this example, the seasonal component will be smoother and less flexible. This is suitable when you believe that the dominant factors driving the yearly seasonal pattern are relatively few and that a smoother representation will capture the main patterns more effectively. A low number of terms can also help prevent overfitting uh, as it restricts the complexity of the seasonal component. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, uh, beyond our bike sharing example, of course, suppose you are analyzing the sales of a company that sells winter clothing. The sales have a strong yearly seasonality with sales peaking in winter and dropping in the summer. Using a low number of Fourier terms, for example, four, 
might be appropriate in this case as you would expect the main driver of seasonality to be the temperature changes between the seasons and a smoother seasonal component would capture this pattern. So pretty much the same principle applies in our case as well for bike sharing statistics forecast because here as well we believe that there are relatively fewer number of factors that will affect the seasonality part of a bike sharing usage pattern. Now in contrast, uh, let's take an example where you may need a higher number of rear series. Consider a tourism based business where the yearly seasonality is affected by multiple factors such as holidays, local events and weather pattern. In this case, you might need a higher number of rear terms to accurately capture the complex interplay of these factors on the yearly seasonal pattern. So in summary, the yearly seasonality parameter controls the granularity of the yearly seasonal component in your time series data. And by setting yearly seasonality equal to four, in this case, we are choosing to model the yearly seasonality using only four Fourier terms, resulting in a smoother representation of the seasonal pattern. Now to expand on this point, uh, in multiplicative seasonality, the seasonal and holiday components are multiplied by the base trend to create the final forecast. This mode assumes that the effect of the seasonal components and holidays increases or decreases proportionally with the magnitude of the base trend. So multiplicative seasonality is more suitable for time series data with an exponential or non-linear trend. And when uh, the seasonality mode is set to multiplicative, the impact of holidays on the forecast will also be treated as a multiplicative factor. This means that the holiday effect will be proportionally stronger when the base trend is higher and weaker when the base trend is lower. Conversely, when the seasonal seasonality mode is set to additive, the holiday effect will be constant and independent of the base trend. So in summary, the seasonality mode setting in a profit time series project affects not only the seasonal components, but also how holidays and uh, holidays are incorporated into the forecast. The choice between additive and multiplicative seasonality depends on the characteristics of your time series data and how the seasonality and holiday effects interact with the base trend.